On this edition of the Nesson College Hockey Podcast, we'll give you our three stars of the week in Hockey East, preview this weekend's games, and speak with Providence senior Spencer Young. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Nesson College Hockey Podcast. I'm Dakota Randall, alongside always Pat McAvoy. Patrick, how are you? I'm good. Good? I'm solid. You uh, all sound good. I'm good. You know, I'm pretty good, having a good day. Um, okay. Exci I'm excited. You're excited? That's the best way I can describe how I'm feeling right, right good. Uh, well, we got a great show for you today. A lot of interesting uh, results across the nation, particularly in Hockey East. Decent shakeup in the national polls, as always. Mm -hmm. Number one went down, so that's a big uh, topic that we'll talk about. Pat, yep. I know you have something to say about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and there are plenty, plenty of games this weekend also worth keeping an eye on. We also have an interview with Providence senior Spencer Young that, Patrick, you did. So yep. we're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. But before we go any further, I want to get into the Nesson schedule for this weekend. It all starts Friday. All our games this weekend are men's hockey. And again, it starts Friday. New Hampshire at Providence. That's at 7 p.m. on Nesson Plus. And then Clarkson at Dartmouth, also at 7 p.m. That's on Nesson Plus. Sorry, New Hampshire Providence is on Nesson. Clarkson at Dartmouth. Uh, on Nesson Plus, both games at 7 p.m. Saturday is part of our Super Saturday. A lot of college action on the docket this weekend, a lot of college basketball. Oh, we also yeah. have three college hockey games, UConn at Northeastern at 4 p.m. on Nesson, Providence at New Hampshire in the second game of their home and home at 7 p.m. on Nesson, and then finally BU and BC, the latest edition of the ComAv rivalry. That's at 7 p.m. on Nesson Plus. Remember, all of our hockey's coverage is brought to you by Rockland Trust where each relationship matters. So we'll get into those games. Mm -hmm. We'll get into our interview with Spencer Young. We've got a bunch of other stuff to get to, but first, as always, we're gonna give you our Hockey East three stars. I'm gonna start with Philip Lindbergh, UMass goalie. I watched the first game between UMass and BC, and he was just a stone wall. He made 41 saves yep, yep, Friday yep. night in UMass's 3-1 win over BC. That game ended the Eagles' 10-game winning streak, and Lindbergh was just huge. And there was one stretch, I believe it was in the second period, where BC had multiple power plays. Uh, it seemed like they had a power play for like seven straight minutes, and he made, I don't know if it ended up being on SportsCenter's top 10, but when he made it, the announcers were, on Nesson were saying that that should be on SportsCenter's top 10, mm -hmm. and it should have been. It was an incredible save on David Cotton, uh, who was over on the uh, faceoff dot on the right side, and had basically a wide open net that would have tied the game, I believe, or no, would have given BC a lead because the game was 1-1 at the time. Would have mm -hmm. given BC the lead, and Lindbergh made a huge save, and from he didn't let up anything from that point on. And he was huge, big reason why UMass pulled off that victory. Uh, so he is my number one star of the week in Hockey East. Next up, we got Tice Thompson from Providence. This is the first uh, Providence action we have on this podcast today. There's gonna be a lot more, so it's a tease. Um, Tice Thompson Love had... <laughs> Two goals and two assists on the weekend. He scored twice against American International on Thursday, including a shorthanded game winner. And he assisted on both of Providence's goals and its 2-1 win over UConn on Saturday. Providence is rolling. Starts with Tice Thompson. And uh, solid weekend to boot. Yep, he had a great weekend. Uh, another good weekend for Tice Thompson. Yep. And finally, number three star, Will McKinnon, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. UNH, sophomore defenseman. Listen, it wasn't anything outrageous, but he had the overtime winner against Northeastern. Uh, and so that's it. Uh, you know, I believe it was his second career goal, first of the season. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a big win for UNH at home to extend their, I think they're 8-0-1 in their last nine at home at the Whittemore Center. And big, you know, big win against the team in Northeastern who entered the number 11 team in the country. So that's a great win for UNH. And just, you know, obviously I have some bias being from New Hampshire. I'm a mm -hmm. UNH fan. So I figured I'd give Will McKinnon a little plug. He got the overtime winner. So he is the number three star of the week for Hockey East. Yep. So, yeah, so there's our, our three stars. And yep. we have a lot of games that we're going to get to. But I know you had a couple, yes, in I particular, did. a couple series, rather, that you wanted to get to. North Dakota splitting with Nebraska-Omaha. Yep. So number one finally goes down. And that UMass-BC split also is noteworthy. I'm going to start with BC and UMass because, in reality, I'm upset. Okay. BC, uh, Mer I'm from Merrimack, so obviously I'm rooting for them, but, but it's hard BC's to my team. BC's your team, yeah. And You've been all over them, and it's hard to root for Merrimack this year because they're not very fair. good, right? Fair, yeah. I'll say, BC's objectively my team. I'm okay. just kidding. Uh, they lost 10, I mean, they won 10 in a row, and then, like you mentioned, UMass took them down 3-1 to one on Friday. BC did get revenge. They started a new winning streak. Uh, they won 6-3 at Amherst. Um, it was a good series. So game one, 
it was tied 1-1 entering the third period. But then Amherst snapped. They scored two goals in the final frame. Uh, John Leonard scored twice for Amherst in the game. And Alex Newhook, no surprise, he scored uh, BC's lone goal. Um, so for a 3-1 loss, it was, it was a good game. You mentioned uh, Philip Lindbergh. He was just on another yeah, level. Yeah, I almost gave my first start of Leonard for scoring the two goals. But just from when I watched that game, yeah. they, they wouldn't have had a chance to be taking the lead Seriously. in the third period if it wasn't for Lindbergh. 100%. Like, that's a monster game. And you can't be upset because he played so well. But, uh, you know, game two, BC got them back. They scored two in the first, three in the second, and then they added another one in the third. It was, it was game over. Uh, they, it was a good... Good series. I'm, I hope later on in the season we can get another matchup between these two, maybe in the NCAA tournament or something along those the lines. Hockey East tournament too, right? Hockey East as well. Because um, I think BC, obviously 10 wins in a row, it speaks for itself. Amherst was number two in the country at one point, although they're not right now. Like These are two heavyweights that, when it's all said and done, I think we'll have a say in, like you mentioned, both the Hockey East championship as well as maybe – even the NCAA championship. Yeah, two great teams, and, and my takeaway really from watching those games, mm -hmm. BC definitely is the better team. Yes. And, you know, I mean, yes, UMass won that first game, but BC, or Limburg had to make 41 saves. Yeah. And I mean, you could easily make the case that BC was the better team that night, and then they go out the next night and, mm -hmm. and had a convincing victory. So good win for UMass, no doubt. Uh, but it definitely, I don't think it says, it's, it's not no. a knocking, it's BC. No, not a at 10 game winning streak. I think they still looked like the better team in the series. Yeah. But yeah, entertaining hockey. Around. The only the only negative aspect of it is now the uh, the the York bump is gone. Yes. Now they have lost the much the much hyped York bump. Yeah. I know. Well, you got you got to find a new bump. Seriously. Yeah. Start your search for a new bump. Yeah. And uh, so to segue into North Dakota versus Omaha, what what happened? North Dakota for the first I looked it up. Omaha defeated North Dakota. It was their first loss in 16 games. Um, Omaha they came out they scored two goals in each period, and it was. It just seemed like uh, North Dakota was overmatched. Although they got, like, similar to BC, they got revenge in game two. They won four to one. Um, they had a strong first period. Like BC, they scored three in the first, and it was over. Uh, Mark Senden was big for North Dakota. He scored two goals um, across the weekend, one in each. But I was surprised to see that first game against Omaha. But, I mean, it, I don't think it necessarily matters. I mean, it was first loss in 16 games. you got to lose at some point. And right. That's a... Omaha is a fine team and fine loss, but surprising. Yeah, listen, I think it, it's not really a, a big deal for North Dakota. Yeah. Listen, they, they were number one team in the country, not going to win every game. Exactly. They had a tough loss, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't kill them too much for it because Omaha is not a terrible team. If you listen to last week's episode, I didn't outright call an upset, mm -hmm. but I, I did. I did everything but do that uh, when I was just talking about games that we were looking forward to. I True. mentioned look out for an upset because Omaha has played a lot of good yeah. teams very tough this season, and it wouldn't surprise me if they pulled one off. Felt like North Dakota was due for a loss. Yeah. So they finally fell. It's not a big deal. Every team loses sometime. Yeah, it's but, yeah, it's nice to see you know a little shakeup. Not yeah. one team in the country go down. Good for Omaha. I didn't, I didn't realize until like doing research that it was 16 games in which they hadn't lost. Like that, yeah, they've been there was, doing I great. think, one or two ties mixed in there, but right. like, that's just freaking crazy yeah so yeah interesting stuff both those series i thought were really interesting yeah uh, other notable games to get to uh you mentioned the mass bc split uh yep. bowling green beats then ties michigan tech just some good wch hockey between two ranked teams denver picks up two victories they keep rolling minnesota duluth beats then ties western michigan mm -hmm. minnesota state dominates ferris state minnesota state rolling again after a couple suspect losses uh, Michigan sweeps Notre Dame. Notre Dame, a team I can't quite figure out. Just have a lot of weird losses this season. Uh, and Arizona State beat Brown in overtime in a game that was on Nesson. I caught the final, mm -hmm. well, the final three periods, I guess, if you count overtime. And that was a great game. We mentioned it that, you know, Brown is, is, is a sneaky quality team in Arizona State, nationally ranked. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of cool to see them come on this side of the country. Yep. And, yeah, I thought that was an entertaining game to watch. Arizona State picks up the W in overtime. So, yeah. A lot of good stuff. How about them some devils? How about them some devils? Some, some sun devils. Mm. Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, before we get to our interview with Spencer Young, as always, uh, we're going to give you the national polls. So with North Dakota losing, Cornell, a 12-1-2, moves up to number one in the country. Well, tied for number one. Uh, 
but either way, you, for all intents and purposes, they're the number one team in the country. Mm -hmm. Followed by North Dakota, then Minnesota State, Denver, Boston College, Penn State, Clarkson, Minnesota Duluth, Ohio State, UMass, Providence, Northeastern, UMass Lowell, Arizona State, Bowling Green, at number 15, Harvard at number 16, Northern Michigan, Notre Dame, Michigan Tech, Michigan State, Quinnipiac, and some of the other teams receiving votes, Army, Sacred Heart, Bemidji State, Michigan, Western Michigan, Dartmouth, Maine, UNH, and Minnesota. Pat, I know you have a few things you want to get into with the polls, yep. but before you do, uh, just in general, I find it interesting that we have uh, Northern Michigan, Michigan Tech, Michigan State, and then in teams receiving votes, Michigan and Western Michigan. I mean, good God. That's crazy. It's foreseeable that by the end of the season, there could be five Michigan teams uh, in the top 20. So if you're in the Wolverine State, mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of good college hockey to watch. That is true. So, that's yeah. a lot of Michigan. Yeah. Um, that's more Michigan. Michigan than you'll see in any, anything else. Yes. Um, so about these polls. So first thing you notice, obviously, is the tie between Cornell and North Dakota. That's kind of crazy. I'd never seen a tie before, but maybe that's just me. That's kind of cool. Um, but so biggest drop it's of the week. Points. It's not unheard of, but yeah, yeah. It's, it, it is interesting, yeah. Um, Notre Dame. They're a tough one this week. Notre Dame went from 14 to 18 after the sweep um, by Michigan, like you mentioned. They've lost eight of their last 11 games. So yeah, I'm out on Notre Dame. Out. Bad time to be over at, uh, at Notre Dame. Um, aside from that, though, there are not really many other drops more than one spot. Like, for example, BC went from four to five. So I kind of missed the earlier parts of the season when, like, each week there were these crazy drops and rises because it was kind of crazy and interesting. But um, at this point, there's really not. On the other side, so um, the highest risers, so again, nothing really more than one. So uh, Cornell, they're up number one right now for the first time, I believe this season, or at yeah. least in the yes, I believe this recent uh, yeah. memory. Um, they've had a big couple weeks, like we've already talked about their uh, past week, but two weeks ago there were three, now they're all the way up to one after two solid weeks. But then the uh, highest riser, Harvard, from 18 to 16, Maybe they're putting it together again. They smoked Yale. 7 nothing. Yeah, they did. So uh, maybe the offense is back because it's been sorely lacking over the last week and a half, two weeks. But aside from that, cut and dry. It's almost identical to last week. But yeah. a couple, I, I like how, um, what team was it? Oh, Quinnipiac. I was going to say, Quinnipiac sneaking they back snuck in. in. We've been wondering what's been going on with them and if they're mm. going to figure it out. Maybe they are starting to at the right time. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy for them. Good for them. <laughs> good for them. All right, yeah, good stuff, Pat. Okay, so without any further ado, we want to get into our interview with Providence senior defenseman Spencer Young. Uh, he's a Brentwood, New Hampshire native, so if you're wondering, you know, yes, there was a little bit of bias in why, uh, <laughs> why I wanted to target him for an interview, uh, but also a great player for Providence. He's been a fixture on the Friars Blue Line for the past three seasons. Yep. A solid puck-moving defenseman for Providence. Uh, he's not going to wow you with his offensive output or anything, but he certainly can score some points. Uh, he's having another uh, solid season for Providence, which is 13-5-5 five and, five, and in first place in Hockey East. Another great season for Nate Lehman's squad. Uh, they're coming off a 2-0 weekend, including wins over American International and UConn, and now have two against UNH that yep. I'm looking forward to. Pat, you spoke with Spencer. Any takeaways before we get into the interview? Well, so to go back to what I mentioned earlier, how I'm rooting for Merrimack, but like, you know, it is what it is. I, my legion switches. Right now I'm pulling for Providence. Spencer you Young's a good a team, guy. Man. You got three teams you're pulling for. You got to pick one. He's a good guy. I'm, I'm consistent. I love UNH and I hate Providence. That, I hate BU. Oh. I hate BC. I hate all these teams. I don't hate any of the teams. I, you but, know, I'm not talking crap about them. I'm just saying I, I, I'm, I'm a UNH fan. Fair. I want everybody else to lose. Spencer Young, he, you, I'm, I'm not surprised he's the captain of the team. Just from one conversation with him. Seems like a good guy. One thing that you'll notice throughout the inter, uh, interview a lot is he talked about the transition from the team each year because right now they're, they're our top to Hockey East regular season standings right now. Yep. Last year they finished second, the year before third. So it's just been kind of like each year there's been growth and there's 12 freshmen on the team this year. And so it's interesting that they still continue to rise even with like the influx of um, players. But um, he's a few years removed from that national championship. Exactly. Too. Uh, it's very he's a very interesting guy just one conversation you can tell why the the, the team follows him um, it's gonna be it's a good interview cool cool well uh, we're looking forward to it so yeah again without any further ado here is our interview with Providence senior defenseman Spencer Young I'm here with Providence captain Spencer Young. 
Spencer, how are you doing today? Doing good. Excited for the uh, second half of hockey. The coach and I both are excited as well uh, to see what you guys can do. So, um, so let's get right to it. You have an upcoming two-game slate versus UNH and currently sit atop the Hockey East standings. Two years ago, Providence finished third place in the regular season standings. Last year, second place. How would you describe your team's season so far? Uh, it's definitely been a season of growing. Uh, last year, we, we definitely had an older, uh, experienced team. And, and this year, uh, with all the guys that moved on, we had uh, – a huge opportunity for younger guys, um, freshmen, sophomores, to come mm-hmm. in and make an impact right away. So, the the first few weeks and uh, months were definitely a, a growing period, but we've definitely uh, established our identity as of recently and and been able to to win some big games and put us, ourselves in a, a good situation uh, atop the hockey's poles and in the pairwise as well. Absolutely. And I'm kind of glad that you mentioned um, the young guys because that actually segues right into my next question because as one of the captains of this team, I want, to, I want to ask, how do you go about getting everybody on the same page, especially with 12 freshmen this year? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's, it's difficult at first because um, so many guys are coming from different places and, and, and not used to the, the way that we um, kind of operate, but I think our style of uh, – of practice and play mm-hmm. comes uh, hand in hand with with getting the guys on the same page because it, it definitely puts everyone in the same mindset. So I think those aspects make it a, a lot easier and just uh, experience and, and, and comfortability and, and, and guys kind of playing together definitely definitely puts everyone uh, together and it makes it uh, not not as difficult as a task as you'd think. That sounds pretty sweet. And so now to uh, kind of wrap back around to your first answer, you mentioned how your team's building its identity. So in your own words, what, how would you describe this team's identity? Um, I think we're, we're definitely more skilled than, than we have been in my four years. But with, with mm-hmm. that being said, we've always been a, a hard-nosed, um, hardworking team under, under Coach Lehman. So mm-hmm. I think – this year it's it's a it's a great balance obviously we have two of the top two scorers in the country and and those guys mm-hmm. have been, been getting it done up there but they also know how to how to put their head down and work hard and 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 I so I think that is uh through and through our whole lineup sweet um so now moving forward so you're thinking about this team so right now you're currently sitting atop the um hockey east regular season standings like I mentioned um, you have two games slate with UNH coming up. Big wins over Maine, BC, BU, Northeastern, UML. What are your team's goals moving forward for the regular season and beyond? I think it's just uh, keep keep winning. Um, we're out of uh, non-conference play right now, so so mm-hmm. every game is important, and I think every game that we win is is giving us a, a leg up on a team that may have split a series or, or, or dropped a game. So I think just winning at any means necessary right now to not only keep our lead, but um, get ourselves mm-hmm. in a good position uh, in the standings and um, for playoffs. Absolutely. And so now do you specifically, you currently sit three points away from your 50th career called collegiate point. What does that number mean to you, if anything? I honestly hadn't even thought about it until you just brought it up. I haven't really uh, paid much attention, but um, yeah, I think it'd be a good accomplishment. Um, my four years here, I mean, have been have been awesome. So I think getting some like that and uh, enjoying the success that I've been able to have with Providence, going to three tournaments and uh, the team just doing so well would be really great. And similar to earlier, you kind of just segued right into my next question. So um, what has Providence meant to you over the last few years, both hockey-wise but also just personally? I mean, it's been a home for sure. I mean, I I decided to come to uh, Providence after my uh, junior year of high school, and I never Mm -hmm. had a doubt um, about not coming here. I think just the – the team atmosphere and and the guys that I've been going through here has been great, and um, 
is definitely a special place for me uh, personally. And then hockey wise, it's it's done nothing but uh, make me a better player and a better person. I mean, it definitely taught me how to play a complete game and um, be a part of a team. Absolutely. That sounds pretty awesome. Um, so I know we talked already about the team goals moving forward. So, But now, again, back to you. So what are your personal goals as captain of the team for the remainder of the season and then beyond? Um, I think for me it's just uh, continue to be uh, you know a strong leader and um, continue to drive the team in a good direction. I think mm-hmm. being to the garden before and being to three tournaments before will kind of gives – my class and the older guys some um, insight on that, and I think getting to a fourth would be an incredible accomplishment for um, my classmates and I. Just how difficult it is would be a testament to how how much work we've put in. Mm. Um, and then just go game by game, and then however it ends, just uh, <clears throat> see how my options are and see, go from there. I'd definitely like to continue to play after. Absolutely, and now. So for my final question, so obviously you've been playing hockey for a long time. How how would you just – how does this team that you're on right now, like, differentiate itself from any other team you've been on? I know that's a broad question, but, like, in a few words, like, what makes this team stand out? Uh, I think it's just the closeness of the team. I mean, mm. being one of the older guys, I'm about to be 23, and we got – as you said before, 12 freshmen in, and we had 18, 19 year olds, and I think everyone's just so close. Um, I've been on teams before where guys are, you know, closer in age, but just just not as um, tightly knit. So I think that's mm. definitely helped us in the first half, because um, I think without that, we would have been handicapping our sense. So that chemistry and that uh, closeness has really stood out to me, and um, it's a really important aspect of uh, of a team, I think. Absolutely. Well, Spencer, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do this, and good luck moving forward. Thanks for having me. Welcome back, everybody. I want to thank Spencer Young again for taking the time mm-hmm. to speak with us, or speak with you, Pat, rather. Yep. Uh, yeah, again, good interview. I thought he uh, had a lot of good answers. Interesting guy. Yeah. And, uh, again, obviously I'm a UNH fan, but I, I like the way Providence plays. I've always liked their brand of hockey. Mm-hmm. like watching Spencer play as well. So, um, you know, I, I and as much as I can, I'm rooting for them to succeed. Fair. Also want anybody who joins the podcast to have success as well. So That's, Spencer, that's all it is. Yeah, so Spencer, another best, podcast bump. Right, another another podcast bump. So Spencer, best of luck going forward. Uh, before we get uh, to the rest of the podcast, I want to give you the Nesson schedule one more time. All men's hockey this weekend starts Friday. New Hampshire at Providence at 7 p.m. on Nesson. And then Clarkson at Dartmouth also at 7 p.m. That game's on Nesson Plus. And Saturday is part of our Super Saturday. Tons of college action, including three college hockey games. UConn at Northeastern at 4 p.m. on Nesson. Providence at UNH in the second game of their home and home at 7 p.m. on Nesson. And finally, BU at BC at 7 p.m. on Nesson Plus. Great rivalry game to rack up to wrap up the weekend. And remember, all of our hockey's coverage mm-hmm. is brought to you by Rockland Trust, where each relationship matters. Uh, so we only got a couple minutes left. I just want to get to a few games this weekend I'm looking forward to, or series. Uh, U- that UNH Providence series, including one game at the Whittemore Center where UNH has been excellent this season. Again, UNH is kind of teetering on whether or not they're going to make the hockey's postseason. Um, and in general, if they are going to have any sort of shot at making the national tournament, obviously I'd like them to as a UNH fan. True. Uh, but I- either way, I think this has a chance to be a really good series. UNH plays a fun brand of hockey. So does Providence, you know, kind of. UNH has a lot of speed where Providence also has a lot of speed, but they also kind of play more tough. Uh, tough brand of hockey, so I think it's a good match, or good clash of styles there. And so I'm, I'm interested to see if, if UNH can can defend their home ice again as they have all season, and then to mm-hmm. see if they, you know, if they can take it on the road, if they can win a big game in somebody else's building. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, BC plays UMass Lowell, which should be another great hockey's game, two true, great true, hockey's true, true. programs, and then a game against BU, rivalry game. 
I went to grad school at BU, so I, you know, I- Subtle plug. Yeah, you well, know, no, I'm just saying, so I, 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 you know, I also always take notice when BU and BC play, because I've been to those games, they're fun, mm -hmm. big rivalry stuff. Uh, so looking forward to that. Minnesota State has two with Bowling Green. Ups well, I don't even want to call it an upset because Bowling Green's a great team, but Minnesota State is number three in the country. Bowling Green is 15. Uh, I'm expecting a big weekend from Bowling Green. Maybe not a sweep, but I think they're going to at least get one. Uh, Alabama Huntsville and Alaska Anchorage. Just looking at this because could you get two programs from more different places than Alabama and Alaska? Yeah, no, that's nuts. Not that's even crazy. saying that their styles of hockey will reflect where, where the schools are based, but in general, just I think it's funny that Alabama's going to play Alaska in anything. Yeah, they're not nuts. Uh, and then finally, Denver has two with Omaha. Mm -hmm. So can Omaha pull off another big upset? They beat the number one team in the country last week. Can they beat the number four team this weekend? We'll Pizza find King. out. Yeah, we'll find out. Our Omaha, is Omaha the, the giant slayer? We'll see. <laughs> For lack of a better word. Uh, okay, uh, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything, anything you want to add, Patrick, before we get out of here? I just want some chaos this week. Want some chaos? Cool. We all, all the top people. I want them all to lose. Chaos is good. I, okay, I don't want all the top people to lose, but... We can have a crazy poll next week. That's what I want. Okay, all right. Yeah, uh, so, again, uh, thanks to Spencer Young for taking yep. the time to speak with us. Make sure you check out all the college hockey action this weekend on Nesson. A lot of great games. And we will recap all of it next week with you on another edition of the Nesson College Hockey Podcast. Thanks for listening, everybody.